of a star. You can see there, Conceslas Kipruto, a non-starter in this deeper chase, Tim. Yeah, he pulled out Conceslas Kipruto. He's talking to his agent this morning. He said that he's had a twisted his ankle at the Kenyan trials. He went on to win those trials. Bidet will be one of the favourites here as a result tonight. Second in uh, Rabat just last weekend in 8-10. It is a strong field, of course, expected to be dominated by the Kenyans. They have uh, about six men in the world top ten for this year. Bob Tari, well, he's getting on in years now, 38 years old. He's got a best of 8.43 for this year. He might struggle here, I think. Senov, likewise, for Bulgaria. He's an 8.30 performer this season, has a best of 8.20. But if you're not down there at around under 8.15, around 8.10, then you really do suffer in these sorts of races because the Kenyans do to love, love to run it hard from the front and to make it a very honest race. The pace is expected to be lightning quick, although if that was uh, requested by Conceslas Skip Ruto, the Kenyan uh, trials champion and the Olympic champion, then it might be irrelevant. It was going to be 2.37 from Haran Lagat for the first kilometre. That's a world record tempo. Well, let's see how it goes then. This field of, what, some 15 athletes and Ceslos Kipruto sensibly has been persuaded by his uh, agent, and I know they had quite a fiery discussion as to whether or not he should run tonight. He had to drop out of Rabat last week, and uh, running today would not have been the sensible option. He can rest his ankle, give it time to recover, and still not jeopardise his, crucially not jeopardise his chances come London in a couple of weeks' time. But one athlete I haven't mentioned yet who is very special in good form is the Olympic silver medalist. Evan Jager there in third place. He's been up in uh, San Moritz training, had a quick chat with him this morning. He said that he, the day straight after the US Championship in Sacramento, he headed off to San Moritz and has been training at altitude there very, very diligently for a month. He said everything's gone well. And I think he could be one man who really could threaten the Kenyan's dominance, perhaps for the first time in many years, Steve, in terms of where the gold medal goes in London. I don't want to jinx him, but he is a special athlete. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it, 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 you, know you, you look at the... Um performances of Elbakali and, and one or two others and, and you, yeah you know Jaeger will be uh, Jaeger will be looking and thinking yeah I've got a chance of you know, Kipruda's injury etc uh, incident you might have seen Matt Hughes fall at the first barrier uh, he got up and um, picked himself up a second barrier uh, so he actually was there first so he's okay just moving through the field but yeah I, I think this is an open race in terms of the championships because uh, the championships are different to these uh, diamond leagues when we do have a pace and as you said a, a good pace being set here tonight so Jacob with a chance to really you know just re-establish his own confidence in terms of his ability of winning a medal Jager in third place then Birec in third in fourth Quebec. well back to this uh, steeplechase Evan Jager in uh, second place now the uh, early tempo quick but not as quick as uh, had originally been request, requested, although I think it's sensible, 2.41 at 1,000 by Haran Lagat. That's around 8.05 tempo. 2.41.4 it was, so around 8.05 tempo. Jager in second place. We've got to remember he's a 3.32 1,500-meter performer. He's very nearly a sub-13-minute 5,000-meter runner. He's got great speed and strength, and that's fairly rare for this generation of steeplechasers, most of whom tend to be specialist steeplechasers. Four laps to run. And the uh, second pacemaker, Justus Kipkoria, pushing it along very, very nicely indeed mid-race. And uh, that pack of, what, about eight athletes getting right away from the rest. Jager, of course, desperately keen to break eight minutes after two years ago. Remember falling in the Paris Diamond League when he looked to be heading for a victory in well under eight minutes. That would have been a US record beating Birek Michips last week in Bidgosh and clearing 197 here. Evan Jager then hits the front with just over two laps to run. Birec in second place, Keegan in third, Kabenye in fourth. Jager leading this trio of Kenyans as they come through with two laps to run. 5.58 there. Well, I was hoping it was going to stay a little bit closer to eight-minute tempo and that the American fresh from that altitude training in San Moritz, an absolute paradise for altitude training over in Switzerland, although it gets pretty crowded at this time of year, I understand, with world-class athletes. I was rather hoping he might be close to eight-minute territory tonight, but it doesn't matter. I think what's important for Evan Jager here tonight is to have a strong run after a, a month of very, very hard training and uh, ideally come out on top to beat just about the best of the Kenyans. What a shame Conceslo Skipruto couldn't make, make the start line or it does create some intrigue for London in a fortnight's time. Andy Bayer is in there as well for the USA. He's another man who's made that US team for uh, for London. Well, this is really impressive from Jager for me, Tim. You know, 
He's obviously taken the opportunities. You know, no Cabrudo coach wasn't in this and thinking, OK, no Albacali. Uh, this is my tonight to win. I can dominate over the lesser Kenyans, if you like. That's no disrespect to them. But look at this. He's moving away as he approaches the bell. No fear of being outkicked. Well, no, I get a little bit tired of reminding people that the steeplechase does demand a lot of you. You're running for 99% of the time between the barriers. You've got to work in your flat speed, your strength and speed over 3,000 and 5,000. And most of the top Kenyan steeplechasers don't really do that sufficiently, I think. Jager has done. He's been very diligent with great coaching over these last three or four years to improve his flat speed. And he's tearing them apart here over this final five or 600 meters. About three, 250 to go for Evan Jager. But uh, just about the best of Kenya being left uh, wiltering in his wake here with 150 to run Jager has absolutely destroyed them water jump for the final time he'll be a little bit nervous approaching the final barrier when he comes into the home straight but uh, Keegan is back there so is Birech and Kibenye as well here's Jager at the final water jump takes that one with no mistake at all look at the power look at the freshness and the speed in those legs from Evan Jager loads of stride length and the crowd are appreciating this crosses the line there 801 31 it was pretty close to two minutes to uh, eight minutes after all i think he's covered those last couple of laps with an inside water jump steve in about 202 203 but he has absolutely i don't want to say humiliated but he's beaten by a country mile uh Jairus Pirec, who was a diamond league champion a couple of weeks a couple of years ago he's the commonwealth silver medalist he was fourth in the last world championships that from Evan Jager, I think intrinsically, was probably worth well below eight minutes. Such was the power he displayed through the last couple of laps. Well, that was superb running from him. I mean, your good pace set up. As you said, the second K went a little bit slow. He might look back at that and think, you know, that I could have got eight minutes there because look how strong he was in the uh, latter stages. And for me, I mean, that's his second best ever performance. You know, he's, he's, he's been so close to eight minutes before, but that was superb here tonight. He's not getting dragged around with time. He made it all himself. As you said, that last 200, sorry, last 800, incredibly impressive. I think he saw at the top of the home straight he had a chance just outside eight minutes, though. And the uh, Jager, world lead by three seconds. You know, that's, that's a big margin. If he'd been chasing a time, he could clearly have gone much quicker. Jager wins from Berec Kabenye, and Kabenye then in that steeplechase, winning by well over six seconds from Jairus.